this is a big rich town. I just come from the poorest part. Bright light city life, I gotta make it. Welcome back to another episode of Power After Hours, your favorite power podcast. I am your host, Jeff J. On the other side of the screen is Miss Chrissy B. <laughs> Chrissy oh, B. Wait, Chrissy right. B. Prissy, Pr Prissy B. Oh, that might be an ad. Wow, you know. really? This is what we doing today? This is what we doing? And first of all, y'all see how excited Jeff is to talk about power now? Y'all hear it in his voice? He excited? It's about time. It's about uh, time. Y'all know I'm not trying to edit everything out. So down the, on the <laughs> other side of the screen, top bun mommy, Chrissy Bree in the building. Wow. You already wow. know the vibes. We are here to recap Power, Book 2 Ghost, Season 1, Episode 2, Exceeding Expectations. And this Damn. is actually a... a, a a uh, apropos title for the episode because you know in um at overall for me ghost might be exceeding my expectations as a show Ooh. and we we can get into that and a lot of other things but there there's a lot of themes there's a lot of themes we're going to yeah. get into that I see that's recurring that I think is going to be prominent throughout at least this season and I'm interested what Miss Chrissy got to say about what we about to talk about. I mean, right. yeah, you know, you know, I always have my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, of course. So <laughs> I think I said it last week and I think I say it every time I have a conversation about black people and courts and cops, <laughs> but the, the criminal justice system, yo, know, it's one thing that's been on display since the last season of book yeah. one, Power, the criminality, like the, the, the interjection of politics into the criminal justice system is something that I think has been a big theme of this show, right? Yep. Um, first off, we were asking the question, why, why was it, why would she be able to, Tasha be able to say that Tommy was the murderer? And when all that Fed stuff, when Sachs pulled his, pulled the fast one and took over the case, why wasn't McLean prepared for it? Right. And they they closed that loop yep. because he didn't know. And, and he didn't know that they, they had Fed cases on them, that they even had Fed yep. interest on them. He didn't know that. Uh, he probably didn't know that she was going to say that she asked him to because the way right. he reacted, they weren't ready. Uh, they probably should have been ready for that question, but he didn't think she was going to answer in the way that she did, right? Um, or, or even so, even if she would have been like, I asked him to, and they wanted to continue with the plea deal, right? that would have been good. But the fact that she said that was the plan all along by Stephen Ott and, yep. and Mock, who's trying to get, trying to backdoor clear Ghost's name by putting the whole organization on Tasha so that this mythical ghost person never sees the light of day as being connected to James. Because, you know, we all know, but the public doesn't. Which is crazy to me. Uh, the whole, first of all, that whole thing was crazy to me. I love that now they are closing the loops way faster in this show than what they did, you know, in book one, um, you know, with them, with us now knowing what McLean knew, you know, but I still have an issue with that because I'm like, don't you do research into your clients? Like, you don't know, like, did you not run a, a background check on Tasha? You know, when, when Tariq told you to take the case, like mm -hmm. you weren't prepared to know anything about her. You're in the legal system and you don't know anything about them. I mean, the way they made us out to, and you know, in power book one, it was almost like they were always in the news. Something was always going on at the spot, you know, whether it be James St. Patrick through truth or whatever it was for him not to know anything that could have potentially come out in this situation. I still look at it as a lack of knowledge. Like he there, he should have been he should have known at least that much. Right. Like there's that case is too big for you not to do your research. You feel me? Well, um, well, here's the thing. I, I I don't, once again, I'm not a lawyer and it would be great to give get a lawyer's perspective on it. Um, right. It's the whole state versus federal. Because right. even when um, the prosecutor, uh, Sullivan, 
when she looked into Tommy, when you look into somebody's record, all you see is the convictions and all of that, right? So Tommy just had all of the petty stuff and they said one case, which was still a local case, was was that was was a murder, the murder yeah. case from I think it was the end of season 1 or season 2 when he got arrested and he mm-hmm. was the one that was arrested. They were all he wasn't convicted of the crime. And that right. from if I'm looking from a state level, I'm not think I wouldn't think that they were involved in the feds because all that stuff was contained to New York. Fact. So if you remember, because of everything Angela was doing, the fact that that DA's office got blown up yeah. a bunch of times over, a lot of that stuff they probably didn't allow to get out into that's the press. True. So we know everything that's going on with their case. The public doesn't. And then what's searchable about it, we don't really know. I, I I will say I would expect a lawyer to do extensive research, but if I'm somebody who I yeah, you know, I'm getting I'm getting easy money. I'm thinking I'm gonna get her off. I'm getting this 500 k from this family, whatever. I got this down payment. She's gonna say this. We have a deal in place. I don't there would be no way I would think. Because even with all of that knowledge that he would have had, maybe right. he would have prepared. Maybe McLean would have prepared in just in case something happened. And which is why it was a blind side. That's why you need to tell your lawyers every single thing. Everything. Everything. And, you know, that was the thing. They both kept saying, I didn't think it would matter. I didn't think it would make a difference. And I'm just like, bruh. Like, and you know, the thing about Tasha is she, I think she's trying so hard to hold on to not saying Tariq did it, that she's leaving critical pieces out because she can't, in any way point direction to the thought that it could be Tariq. So, right. I mean, I, I completely get that side of it. I just, you know, I was just still shocked the fact that he didn't know the bare minimum. Like, maybe he just saw the dollar signs. And, I, you know, when you look at his office from this episode, dude is pretty high profile. So I just expected him to maybe know a little bit more based off of the character that they're portraying him to be. Right. But so- obviously, you know, us as having known Mm-hmm. The prior seasons, we just know more than they're privy to. We're like, damn, Meth, you ain't watched Power? You don't know what <laughs> You weren't mad when they put Trey Songs on the right, right, right. You, 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 you wasn't outside, Meth. You wasn't outside. You wasn't outside with us when they changed up that whole theme song. You not do it with us. We had to bully 50. Like, you gotta be with it. But yeah. <laughs> you I out here, you out here recording new music and stuff, and you not figuring out that Ghost was tied up. You don't, you, you wasn't outside when Lobos was there. You wasn't outside. That's all with, I'm saying. Do better. With, with Mitich. You wasn't you wasn't outside, bro. Like you wasn't outside with, with Milan. Yo, yo, McLean, you gotta be outside. He wasn't outside, yo. He wasn't outside. Crazy though. Because it's like it, it's like Tasha is in jail, but she got so many people working against her. Like to only have Davis on her side, it's crazy to me because I you know, she went in with thinking she was going in for one thing, and now she's being prosecuted for something totally different. And she doesn't even know the behind the scenes work that they're doing to get her up out of there. Right. And and that goes into the whole aspect of how politics, when it gets entangled in yep. the criminal justice system, there's a multiple sets of rules. Yep. You have on one side, you have Stephen Ott and Mock who want to protect James St. Patrick's reputation because yep. if they don't contain it, Tate won't be elected governor. Yeah, so, correct. so they cannot, the fact that James was exonerated of all of those charges mm-hmm. that made, that built his character into who he was. He was a redemption story. Now, if it <laughs> turns out that he was the villain all along, that can tank everybody that could take the whole state of New York and the DNC. So what do they do? They come up with this plan. Yeah. Pin, pin the ghost and Tommy Egan organization on Tasha as being the person who was the shot caller. And you think about the way in which they constructed it, right? Yeah. You can't prove, we can't prove in court that Ghost and James St. Patrick were the same person and neither can the defense. So all we have to do is make a, a, a connection between Tommy, who's, who's in L.A., and, and they think he's out. They say he's out in the wind, but Tommy is gone. Yep. Ghost is dead. So now all they have is Tasha left and what Tommy did that they can make the connection 
that yeah. she gave orders on behalf of a criminal organization, hit her with the RICO, and now all of that goes away. On the other side, you have McLean, and they yeah. introduce uh, Paula uh, Matarazzo, the investigator. Ooh, I, love, I love her. She don't want no parts. She mm -hmm. don't want no parts. She already sees. She She's the one who sees no. everything yeah. happening, right? She sees everything happening. She's like, nah, I don't want no parts of this. I, I, you can see they're not telling us the truth. We still don't know the whole truth, but what McLean does know, and you see it in the, um, the side by side that he's building it up. Like, it's not about the what it's about the why, why would they come in? Why would they want to pin this on him? And they, and he makes the connection that they want that this is all political. This is a political right. play. And that's the only reason why they would blow up a, a plea deal in order to try to entrap her, you know? It's crazy. I feel for Tasha, dog, because <laughs> I don't know how she going to get out of it. To me, it's like, as somebody, you know, us who watch the show, it's like, damn, they can't prove Ghost did this. They can't. But in reality, I think without Tommy, you actually can't. Like, it's going to have to be somebody who has real evidence of what Ghost has done. And I'm just looking back like, Anybody did. <laughs> yeah, like they don't really have much to work with, bro. Like the like you said, the only two people left are Tommy and, and Tasha, and, and Tommy's in the wind. So I don't really know how they proved that. I, you know, at one point thought they could just say everything that he did, but you actually have to prove something, and they're they're unable to do that right now. Right. Right. Now. And then you think about Sax, right? Like we we love to hate Sax because Sax is always he's always in some shit. But this oh. is the one time where I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Sax sees the bullshit. He yeah. sees it. And, and this also goes to how district attorneys and attorneys in general, assistant district attorneys, whatever, whatever the, the, uh, the pecking order, right? Sometimes you're given jobs that you have to do where you know that it's a long shot. You know that it's a reach. Yeah. You know that justice is probably not being served in the way that it's supposed to. But you have a job to do because you think about it. Once he was like, when, once he um, they were talking about uh, Ghost and, and Tommy. He was like, James Paint Patrick is Ghost, right? Um, he's like, yo, they did all these crimes. Odd is like allegedly, and allegedly. he goes to John. He goes to John Mock, like Mock. We 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 was in this for how many seasons? We know Ghost and Tommy. He was like, we know. So they already on the bullshit of of plausible deniability and talking about what you can prove versus what you yeah. actually know is true. Yeah. And you see, and you see how that plays out those, those legal loopholes and, and those letter of the law things when they had that talk with the judge, when McLean made the motion to dismiss, because he said that there was, there was shady dealings going on in the U S yeah. attorney. He brings up Sullivan and Sullivan was ready to get, Sax out of there. It's clear that Whoa. they had some type of relationship oh, and Sax yeah. messed that up. So she was ready. She blows him up. She says everything from the point of the fact that they mentioned Ott. First of all, the fact that they mentioned Ott was involved and, and the judge was able to keep a straight face like, like while she was given that, that someone from the DNC came involved and advised to ask her about Tommy's involvement. Yep. Right. First off, secondly, advised her to take the like to to they they had the plea in yeah, order, yeah. knew they were going for the plea, and then at the last moment blew it up with the federal with the federal move, which she didn't know. And she even said it. If it was about the law and justice, then you tell them don't take a deal. You tell the state, don't take yeah. a deal. Prosecute to the fullest extent. And then once you get a conviction, then we can convict based off of your conviction. Exactly. But that wasn't what it was. It was all political. She blows it up. And then who does Sax counter with of all Bruh, people? When she walked through that door, I was like, yeah. I ain't gonna I mean, lie. She was coming back, Miss Blanca. I didn't know Bruh. she was gonna be back. I didn't know. I'm not gonna uh, lie. When I saw I was like. I know. I know. You she want. Gonna, she gonna with the bullshit again. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> You know, because Blanca was good for that. You know, she love her, but she, you know, she plays by the book. You right. know, she's going to tell you straight up, you dirty. I don't, I don't mess with that. Like, she just wanted the truth to be told. 
And I love that, you know, even though she does sit there and answer Sack's many questions that are complete bullshit, you know, because he's asking her questions knowing that she can't give the reasons behind those answers, which is jacked up. And, and Davis is not prepared for those type questions either because he doesn't know the whole truth. So <clears throat> it's just a mess from the beginning. But I do love that at the end, she tells Davis, like, you put me on that stand and I'm going to blow this shit up. Like, I'm going to tell you how dirty sex is, which I think is something Davis needs to know, that you are playing this game with somebody who's going to do whatever it takes, dirty or not, to win. So just be pre- just be ready for that. Right. And and it's funny, Blanca had the same reaction I did when she walked through, because she was like, I ain't trying to be here for the bullshit either. But it's just, it's also funny style how... He's asking the questions just to get a yes, no, without context, to have enough to be able to proceed with the trial. Because everything that he was asking her about Tasha came with a caveat, like the whole finding, uh, knowing where to um, find Terry Silver's body. And you, but then you see, you see how cunning, the cunning that. Uh, and the guile that lawyers will use to build their case, because he was like, okay. Did she did Silver have anything that could take down her her husband? She believed so, yes. Did he did she know where to to find his body? Yes. Is it possible is it possible that she could have had him killed to keep him quiet? She was like she's not built yeah. like that, but oh, yeah. yeah. Like, that's and not he's her. Like, oh. like that's not who she is. It was literally like a math problem. It was an equation that he set up. Motive, intent, Order Rico. There it is. And the judge was just like, all right, well, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to prove it in court, but in court. yeah, you do technically. I can't say that you don't have a case. And it's just, I'm telling you, it's so it's so nasty. It's so nasty. And it and it's it's also a referendum on how the criminal justice system treats black people, oh, right? Absolutely. Because these are the type of because in the reverse. Those type of backdoor deals and and depositions and and motions and shit like that, those are the type of things that can get people who have the wealth or the the complexion protection to get out. Oh, not the complexion protection. Yeah, man, it's yeah. like it's like a ward. It's like protective spells yeah. that you cast on you in order to get out of some type of crime or to get out of jail time. And a lot of people don't have the financial yeah. means to hire the best lawyers or the complexion protection to get the benefit of the doubt. And and in Tasha's case, it's not so much because they are pretty much well off, but the fact that they, I mean, she don't have anything. It's all tied up in that, in that money that they won't go out in the public eye. She's not, she's not, nobody would call her poor. Right. So, so it's not so much that, but the fact that politically, it's in it's in a political party's best interest for you to be in jail. That sounds that sounds eerily familiar to a lot of different situations. And, and I'm by no means going to make a connection for Tasha St. Patrick to be connected to any type of civil rights icon or anything like that. And not even I have Mr. Fantastic Arms that long to stretch. But okay. it it's just it's just ill to watch how politics injected into the criminal justice system can be the catalyst for you to get off or to get prosecuted. Yeah, man. And that's where we're at with this, you know, despite the fact that, you know, Tariq is doing everything in his power to come up with that money. At the end of the day, Tasha's still sitting in that jail cell. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and technically for something that she didn't do, which we've seen, you know, time and time again with this show, a lot of times the people that were arrested, it was for things that, they technically didn't do it was usually somebody else but they got pinned with it so it's just jacked up to watch how they're treating her and and you know seeing how she is in jail she don't even have bail you know what they did to her at that funeral i thought was jacked up like they're just playing really really dirty and i think we're gonna have to see that side of davis come out where he also does what he has to do to get his client off and so i think this is the beginning of davis being all nice prim and proper but I have a feeling we're going to see him get dirty in a second. Man, he better get dirty. $500,000 in paying for you for some damn lawyer fees. Yeah, you better get dirty. Just, sorry. You know, you still owe him a lot more money than that. And right. based on his office, bruh, he's pretty well for himself. And and I, I, I'll say I like the way 
um, Meth is leaning into the character because yeah. you, I, I liked how when he was presenting the case to to Paula and he's like, you know, this is a woman under siege, and she, he's saying it as if he would have said it in the courtroom. Um, I, I, I just, I, I like how you can tell when he's putting on a show. Like, you know, when he was talking to the judge, he's like, your honor, you know, if Mr. Sachs ever did follow the book, you know, it's, it's, it's just funny. Like the way he's always on, he's always yeah. performing. And that's the type of person you want in your corner. If you have a oh, defense hey, attorney, yeah. because it's life is a stage and he is going to be the leading man one oh. way or another. You feel me? Can't wait for opening statements. <laughs> right, 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 right. He's, he's going to be, he's going to be on one. And he's, um, I think he's gonna have to do some digging. Like he's gonna have to really the same way that you know Sachs and them have an investigator. Davis is really gonna have to come up with somebody to do the dirty work to find out really who was James St. Patrick. Like this information, I have to believe it will come out at some point. Something there's gonna be enough evidence somewhere to pin something on James St. Patrick. Right. But it's just a matter of them having to get dirty to find it out. Right. And and I can't wait to see how Sachs ruins that investigator's life. Donovan's former um oh. direct report direct report. I can't wait to see how he does he does the one thing that either gets him locked fired up, fired, dead. or dead. Or dead. And I would say low key, keep an eye on Blanca too, because Blanca's probably one of the last people who Wild can De detonate the USDA's office. So if she's, she's a problem, a I definitely think, you know, her speaking to Davis and letting him know, like you put me on that stand and I'm going to blow it up. Like, just let me know when and where, you know what I mean? So right. I definitely think Blanca is going to be that one person because she knows everything. She was in that case. And she's like one of the only ones that are actually alive afterwards. So, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to her, but I definitely know that the information one about sax being there the night jamie was killed i mean james was killed is going to come out and so that has to be a point that we don't forget because that's still something that's over his head mm -hmm. which is why he's so skeptical so that's going to come out at some point i'm just waiting to see how davis brings it to light once Tariq finally tells him because it's gonna happen right that's a fact that's definitely a fact and um speaking of Tariq, man yo he, he came of age this episode he came of age this episode. Um, and we, we all, he's, he's intertwined with a lot of these themes. Um, the second one is the one, the other one is we talk about Monet. We, we, we spoke about Mavis. We got a lot more Monet this episode. Thank goodness. And, and there's a lot of similarities between Monet's family and Tariq and their, and their family, right? Yep. They, they all are still, keeping secrets from each other while trying to pro project um a family atmosphere like like a have one vision or or one uh facade of them when they have something else going on so i, I like the fact that we got more of monet this episode and we get to yeah. see what makes her tick we get we get a little bit of her origin too uh, of just how she got to where she is so her husband is in for life. I didn't know he was in for life, but they're saying the husband is in for life. How does she, we know why she's, um, she's cool with the cop now because uh -huh. she's sleeping oh. with him. I don't know if cool with is going to be the word we want to use. Cause that's, it's much deeper than that. <laughs> yes. Mr. Her and Mr. Danilo yeah. having a tryst, if you will. Uh, and, and it's, it's, it's uh surreptitious because she doesn't want her her family to know. And she's she keeps saying, like, yo, Kane, I don't want Kane to see you. You can't be in here. But that's her plug into 5 -0 is to have is is to have them is it, basically having relations with him, sleeping with him. Kane's not gonna see it that way, and she knows that. Right. You know, Kane is the he's the he's the the hitman, like he's the one who kills. So, you know, anyone who is a son, which I'm sure you are, you know what I mean? Um, you protect your mom at all costs. And you know that your mom is not with, you know, her husband. He's just going to see him as the man she's sleeping with, which honestly, he's in trouble. Like this, this cop, and you might want to be watching it back mm. because we know Kane likely is going to take out whoever he views as a threat. Right. So. That, that's I don't see that ending well for the cop. And I think that Monet knows that, which is why she doesn't want Kane to know who what they're really doing here. Here's the here's the ill thing about Monet's family versus the St. Patrick's. Here's the one way that Monet's family 
eclipse them. And in terms of their family dynamic, everybody knows what's going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whole family is in on the business. Everybody knows what's going on, as opposed to the St. Patrick's where uh, Tariq and Raina did not know anything that was going on until it was exposed to them really until once Angela doing, they try to make the fake family with, with Angela. And then from there, all of the, once things started unfolding in their face and then, uh, Kanan got out of jail and started interacting with Tariq. Like once all of that yeah. started happening, that's when their eyes got open. The veil was lifted to this whole underworld that their family was a part of Monet's family <laughs> they they may not be in it, but they know it, and they're a they part of it. it, and they know what the game is. Kane, Kane, who has the most bodies on the show so far after two episodes, he's 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 a he's a, a main cog, and everybody else plays that part. You see Monet talking to um Diane about mm -hmm. it, her her daughter, and telling her how to use her assets and and um the power that she has over men to to get information and to and to control she's literally teaching them game that ghost did not want to teach his kids or even expose them to because he wanted them to have a better life while monet is saying this is your life and you got to figure out how to live within it which, which reminds me of the conversation in the last season that Tasha was having with Tariq at that table in her, her new house. You know, it kind of brings me back to that moment because at that point by this final season, Tariq had known pretty much everything that was going on, but he needed to know the insides, how to work it, what it to do to stay safe, to make it look like you're not a drug dealer. So I kind of connected those two conversations, the way that Monet is talking to her daughter and the way that Tasha was talking to Tariq. I just found it interesting that they do it two different ways, but in the same point, they still mothering their children. So I thought that was kind of dope. Like you just got to know what you're good at and use it to your advantage. And that's what, you know, they both taught their kids respectively. A hundred percent. And that whole scene with their, with their, uh, uncle Frank that came in Ooh. Ooh, and not it, Frank. listen, I love it because Tariq and Monet are both on the same page. Yep. So the one of the, the best scene, the best scene, Tariq has two of the best scenes by far after two episodes. Absolutely. That scene where where Frank comes in, Frank comes in, he's asking for help and all of that. And he's and he basically says, you know, um the husband, um, the husband Tahada inside told him, you know, you got me. And he wants to talk about the business. And Monet's like, all right. Take him, okay, take him back to school. Zeke, you stay here. Now we're done. Like, that's it. It's over. When when Kane pulls Tariq over to have that conversation, yeah. there's a lot of things that was that was going on with that. First, Tariq got out the car and already knew what time it was. Oh, he knew. And he, he knew. was calm. And he that's was calm. How, that's what I'm saying. People, I don't think people are really getting the the intricate nature of the way Tariq's mind works like we are really really getting to see how detailed his character is in this episode like in this show in general and it's something that we weren't privy to in the previous show because they were so focused on ghosts right. but now we're really seeing why Tariq always said I'm I'm gonna be better than you I'm smarter than you to his dad because I think you know, his dad had to learn those things, whereas Tariq is just like, it's common sense for him. Mm. And I love that, that they're providing that through the, you know, the words and the exchanges that he's having with other characters. Tariq is more complex than I, I gave him credit for. And, you know, in the previous show. Well, a lot sure. of that is also experience because you got to remember, he yeah. thought that things were going to happen a certain way. And he tried to he tried to make the manipulate it in his favor and it kept blowing up in his face. So yeah. now he finally has a sense of what it is because he's lived through it. He's yeah. literally lived off that experience and now he's applying it. So when Kane pulls him over, he's not only calm, he's a little annoyed. Like, yo, I'm trying to go back to like, what, what's this dude about to do? And right. you see Kane pulling up. He got the gun. He's ready. He's right. ready to intimidate him. him. Pulls up like, yo, you ain't seen nothing, blah, 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 blah. And, and Tariq, he wasn't even as concerned with the gun oh. as like, yo, you had me in the house with a snitch. 
Right. And, and even when it. Kane was like, yo, fuck you talking about my family, blah, blah, blah. And he right. breaks it down crazy. Like, yo, has he ever been that happy to see you? Why didn't y'all know that he was coming out? Why didn't he tell your dad? Have you ever heard of a parole hearing? It takes months to come out. He's coming around smiling, laughing, and 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 he's just out quiet. Those are the characteristics of a snitch, and he's going to take you down. I got to get your cousin or back on the team or I'm out of Stansfield. Yeah. So I'm as much invested in your family as you are. We're on the same. He was like, we're on the same team, nigga. You ain't got, tell your mother, you ain't got nothing to worry about me. Now take me back to school. And even Kane was like, in the Shit. car, bro. He turned his back to Kane. And I think that was more telling than anything. Like you turning your back to somebody who you know got it's a weapon holding. and can take you down at any second. He turned his back, opened the door, and like, yeah, can I, can we go back to school now? Like, what are we doing? To the point where Kane was like, damn, this nigga pretty smart. Like, right. okay, I, 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 you hit the game. And well, I'm like, do they not know what Tariq has been through? Mm -hmm. Like, of course, he's got to know some part of the legal system. But, I mean, I, I just, I loved that conversation that they had together. And I also think it shows just how much Kanan taught Tariq as well. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Kane, he learned a lot more from Kanan than I would say he learned from his dad. From the game, um, yeah. From, yeah, from the, the game, game, yeah. So and I thought that was dope too. Like conversations that he's had with Kanan in the past are kind of coming to fruition now that he's in this on his own, technically. Right. And if you think about the scene and the location where they yep. are, it also yep. shows how far Tariq has gone. Because the, yep. when they pulled up in that alley or wherever they were, it eerily looked like. The same alley that Kanan and him got pulled over in yep. when when the cops rolled up and the final Kanan scene. And that was a, a situation where he was nervous. He set yep. Kanan up, thought he was going to die in this uh, in this situation. Yeah, he was in equal, if not greater danger. And he literally stared it in the face and said, I'm not your enemy. I'm on your team. Stop acting up take me back to school so it just shows the growth of his character and him literally putting his life experiences into yep. into perspective and being able to 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 keep it moving like real real recognize real and he and i think kane saw that even when he went back and he and he um and he was like yo uh and he told them he's like yo they think uncle frank is a snitch and mind you when Monet was talking to Diane, she used the same points Tariq was making about Frank. So even in that mind, in, even in that mind, she's like, all right, this kid knows a lot. Now, mind you, they know him because of James's governor, lieutenant governor okay. ambitions. They, they don't, don't know. know intricate details, right. right. They were another gang or whatever they were doing on the periphery. And she, Monet, inherited that she's running it now while her, her husband's in, in jail. But they didn't know. They, they probably heard about Ghost, but they don't know that that's, once again, they don't know that Nobody that's James knows who Frank. Ghost is. Right. Like, anyone who knew who Ghost was is dead, so. Right. So then even Monet is like, okay, this kid knows a lot, but why is he around us like that? And he has Zeke, like, yo, did you invite him or did he invite himself? He invited yeah. himself. And mind you, Tariq probably just wanted a meal and wanted to chill with with his people, like his people. He didn't even have that motive. Right, right. Of course, of course, he didn't even have that motive. But Monet, you gotta, you gotta stay woke, huh? You sure he didn't have that motive though? Because no, I'm saying he didn't have the motive that Monet thinks. I, but I don't know. I, I I don't know that I agree with that because Tariq was in that final episode before the first episode. He was researching the husband. I think Tariq. We may, he may not have said it out loud yet, mm -hmm. but I definitely think there is motive in what he's doing. I don't think it had any, I think the meal, yes, is cool, but I think he's in there for a reason. He's affiliating himself with these people for a reason. He knows they're a gang. He knows they have products. I think, I think Tariq is a lot smarter than we give him credit for. I just, I just, from what, the way he was looking up the dad on, you know, the internet in that final scene, I think there's a there's a reason he wants to be there. Right. I, I think I think more. I think I, I'll say you're. I agree with you. I don't think that it's a negative. Like I don't no, think he's trying to take no. Monet down. But no. I do think he he's trying to figure it out. He's trying yes. to he he knows from from dealing with the Italians, dealing with Mitich, and all of that. 
you need to know who you around. Yep. So that's why he's doing that. He he's doing that. And then you even see that when it seems like the 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 father helped him get that 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 burner phone into his yep. mom's so that she could uh she could get that morning after pill from whoever whoever homegirl is that looks like she runs the block. Yep. And she was able to he was able to do that. So that's a step. But Monet wants to know everything about him. She asked the cop to do a background check and Zeke. So she's going to figure it out. She's going to figure she's going to figure out whatever she needs to figure out in order to to be more comfortable and to know what Tariq is about. And um, yo, I love Mary because she calls him Tyreek the whole time. <laughs> first of all can we just hold on because i almost said girl first of all you're not a girl like clearly i was gonna be like girl okay it happens all the time all it my female friends call me girl it's whatever me that she was calling him the raw name but because at first i was like is this a is she doing this on purpose or is this just mary being mary that's like, new york yo <laughs> i was like this is just calling him the raw name over and over and over and i'm like were they behind the scenes saying mary is Tariq?" and she was like yeah Tariq." like what how did we get here because well, I mean, we call her Mary, so why can't she call him Tyreek? <laughs> and it's so funny because half the fan base calls this man Tyreek, right? And it's like, and yo, T A R I Q, like, fam, there's no I in Tariq, bro. But, but that's just what it is. It's just like how we add S's on on stuff that don't have S's. Your Tariq is Tyreek for life. Ma Mary is Mary because of my accent. Like that's just what it is. So the fact that she keeps calling him that and it's not corrected, I hope it they did not correct not it. I hope no they did one not has correct said, it. Yo, his name is Tariq. Like no one has said it to her like girl say it right. That's why I'm wondering at some point is somebody going to say that is she is he going to correct her at some point? Like what are we going to be doing with this here because it's just, No, we don't need it. It's authentic, yo. It's 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 Monet. It's Monet, bro. It's, it's as New York as you're going to get. And you know what I say? Y'all want her to stop saying Tyreek. Y'all stop saying Mary. <laughs> which we're, we're not going to do. Which we're not no, going to do. Gonna so do you're Tyreek. I apologize. <laughs> you're Tyreek. I, I just, I, I literally, as I was watching, I was, and I looked at my husband, I was like, is she doing it on purpose? Like, what are we, what are we doing? Like, I, I couldn't figure it out. Um, but yeah, I do love the, just the similarities. But I, one thing that I caught, Tariq looked a little shocked that his mom had the phone. I don't think he intended for her to get a phone, did mm. he? Well, he said, I need you to called, get something. Like, mom? Well, yeah, it, it, that's, that's the one thing that was kind of weird to me because he, uh, he told Diane that he needed to get something in and use a book to do it. And that was what he got in. So I, I, I don't know if, I don't know. know, maybe the burner phone was something extra and he was I like, oh, so. sh oh shit. But you know, Hey, when you get exceptional customer service, you tip your cap and you give them five stars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe we're right, unless that's coming with a with the something attached, which I definitely think it of will. Of course, because there's nothing um, like no string. There's no such thing as no strings attached um, favors in power. Yeah, no, no, no. So Not I at know all. That he definitely looked sounded shocked that his mom was calling him. I don't think he intended for that phone to be there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm interested to see why it was put there because right. obviously they're trying to get you know, to be able to talk to her. And based off of previews, we know they're communicating with their dad. So I'm just wondering how they're going to bridge that gap. I think it's coming. I'm just waiting. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, I'm I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. Um, I like the way, I don't know if they're going to do this every episode, but you see how, uh, <laughs> so in my, in one of my, um, uh, my power group chats, we were talking about whether or not it was smart for Tariq to take on this canonical studies course where it looks like he's going to have an extra workload. And at the time I was like, yo man, he's done a lot. You got to juggle multiple things. It's college. Like, I don't think that he, him selling drugs and getting people to sell drugs is going to be that much of a burden, but I'm like, damn, you got to read a book a week. I a forget how a much week. work we actually did in college, low key. Like, a, but for this course, a book a week is wild aggressive, right? But I like how the books so far have tied into a lot of the personalities of characters from past and present. So this week, the book was Great Expectations, right? And, um, Simon Stern, you know, Victor Garber is such a great actor. Like, I like, like him. he's a I phenomenal actor and he was dropping ball. That, 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 um, 
conversation he had with Tariq when they were deciding whether or not um what what he yeah, what is he going to say at the eulogy. McLean wanted him to trash him so that it looked good for Tasha and yeah. Stern is saying like yo his his uh his persona needs some type of facelift. You got to uplift him because we're doing business now. And he talks about the book. And he said, like, it's a classic tale of moral code being greater than ambition. And that's why poor people get told the story. And I thought that was that was like an interesting take that yeah. he had where where he ties the book to, to Ghost, saying yeah. that he thought that his moral code and ambition was separate, but his ambition was his moral code. And it's yep. kind of like what I said last season where I said Ghost was, James St. Patrick is the costume that Ghost wears, yep. right? Like his ambition, he wanted to be, he wanted to be successful and then he wanted to get out, but he thought that in order to do it, he could, he could take certain roads and separate yeah separate his drug life from his regular life. Like he literally tried to be two different people and didn't accept that, yo, your ambition comes with some of this unscrupulous activity that it comes with disappointing your family. Yeah. And it comes to making selfish decisions that you try to mask under the guidance of doing it for the greater good. But once you try to balance too, you know, he, yeah. he even says, he even says like when, when, when uh when Tariq is saying I gotta protect my mom, I gotta protect my my family, he makes a great quote where he says, just like your father, you're great at looking ahead, but not above. Yeah. Ooh. Like that's a bar. Yeah. You're yeah. greater great at looking ahead, but not above. It's like you you want to plan for the future, but you plan for the future w without seeing the larger picture at the hand. larger picture. And Which and is this is part of where Tariq that. has to decide. <laughs> What is he going to say at this eulogy? And and Simon Stern, for all of his cutthroat business dealing ways, he's given real game. He's given yeah. real game on another way, another perspective to look at situations as more so not a, a zero sum game, but uh, what's in it for me? How do I how how can I be shrewd enough to capitalize on the opportunities that was presented? Simon Stern is a he's very it's like just like last week how I was like, man, he is an asshole. But for for every assholeish comment he makes, some of the stuff actually makes some sense. Um, he's a smart businessman, which is something that we've seen, you know, throughout the previous show. And now we're seeing again how he's essentially attempting to mold Tariq um, into what he couldn't do with Ghost because Ghost's ego was already way above what it needed to be by the time he got to Simon Stern. So I think what we're seeing is, is Simon Stern actually taking on that, let me show you how to run a business. Like, let me show you how to conduct yourself with business. And, and I love that he's doing that for Tariq because Tariq never really got that anywhere. Um, but I, I do, I was really torn by what Tariq should even do at the eulogy. You know what I mean? And I think that's what we're seeing with every book that he has presented. It's almost mirroring a different character. Last episode, you know, that character was what I took as Tariq. Now we're looking at this one mirroring Ghost and what he was doing. So I'm just wondering if throughout the season, we're going to see every book, you know, give Tariq a different perspective on what he views the person in front of him to be. Right. And it's, and it's appropriate. It's apropos that we get this book on Ghost because this episode feels like the proper goodbye yep. to Ghost. We're we're burying James St. Patrick. And that whole eulogy scene was as extra as any funeral oh. I've ever been to in my life. You forget that he's also a political figure now. Think about yep. it. James St. Patrick is a political figure. So everybody shows up. Um, Reverend Macedon, Stern, Tate shows up. Um, the whole uh, <laughs> McLean is there. Um Grandma's there. Yaz is there. The DA's office is there. Tasha is there being brought in, cuffed up. And and they're in the same uh, cemetery where Raina's. I, I thought that was a great touch. I even said that on Twitter, you know, where you're seeing them standing there and you're seeing Raina's headstone behind. I thought that was just a, 
a good touch. And it also that's there obviously for James and the, the, the sympathy factor, you know, he's going to be buried next to his daughter, you know, and how that family has been through so much, you know, pain and tragedy. Um, I just, I, I found that to be like a, just a solid touch that they put her headstone back there. Um, Cause I can't imagine how hard that is for Tariq. You know, when you think about everything that they say their family's been through, that was his whole twin. You know what I mean? So not only is he still essentially mourning the death of Reyna, you know, and seeing that happen, that's another thing, you know, now he's mourning the death of his father, who he murdered, you know what I mean? So I think that's crazy um, how they brought those two together. Um, but I really did enjoy listening to him speak because I, I thought at any moment he was going to blow everything up. I was like, oh, well, it's what he was meant to do. But he actually had me almost in my feelings. I was like, oh, Tariq, like, I don't know. I feel like every, so far, this is the second episode, but we're seeing him make these soliloquies almost where he's making these speeches and he's giving us nothing of what we expected him to give. You know right. what I mean? Like, we're expecting Tariq to be the Tariq of old where he just mouths off and says whatever the hell he's thinking is rude and aggressive. And now we're seeing this soft almost genteel person speak for his father. And I was like, wow, like he did the right thing in my eyes. Um, but I, I was just shocked to see him actually do that. Right. Once again, we forget that he's a kid, like he's growing yeah. into being a man, but he's still a kid in the complexities of family. We yeah. have so many conflicting emotions when it comes to people in our family, especially if we had a discordant relationship with them. And you see that all like Tasha's crying at the funeral. He's crying. And even he meets Uncle Gabe, his Uncle Gabe, where he gives him that speech about we didn't we didn't want to lose him to the streets. And he was bright yep. and he did what's best. And he, he knew that you either end up dead or in jail. Yep. Right. And he said, and I know you're not going to turn out that way. And I think that that kind of uh, it, and it's funny because he even says it in the eulogy that he he's learning more about ghosts now than yeah. he did when he's a child. And that's something that's huge because especially like with with black black boys and their fathers not asking a lot of questions, not getting a lot of them because that previous generation is kind of repressed when it comes to talking about their feelings, their emotions or even their their background or their heritage. I know for myself, I I wish I could ask my father a lot more questions about my family. And it's, you know, know. fortunately I can't, but that's just kind of like you're just trying to survive. You're just trying to live life. Like Jabari talks about that with with um so Carrie. Carrie. Yeah, when when she's like that. she made that point that you yeah. just Right. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a lot of trauma involved, but at the same time, Jabari's like, yo, he's a black man. He, he He's a black kid, black man in America. He don't have time to process his feelings. Like, no. and, and he's like, even this vigil that you're trying to do, everything that you're trying to do, like, it's not like you're, you're pressing too much. Like one side, you say he, you're pressing too much. The other side, you say you're not doing enough to care about his feelings. And that's the tightrope that a lot of us have to walk when we're not as developed in our, our, our feelings and we haven't been taught to do that. So you see that push and pull, you see that push and pull throughout him. And when he tells the story, he tells the story of ghost. He's a complicated man. He said, you know, some people want me to stand here and say, my father's a criminal. Others want me to say he's a symbol of hope, but yep. you know, he saw himself as a reflection and, uh, 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 and did what was best for us and yep. that it was more complicated. And, um, you know, Tariq, he, he learned a lot. He learned a lot from his dad and he, and he even said it. And I think this is the, the mission statement of who he is when he says he wanted to give me the life he could never have. And I'm the manifestation of what he could never be. Ooh. Right. And what he could never be was James St. Patrick as yeah. who he thought that was is somebody yeah. who could delete all of his criminal activity and yeah. live the life that he wanted, which was to be successful, to be black and to be safe without the stress of the streets. Yeah. And that's what he wanted for Tariq. And he thought by shielding him from his past. And that's what a lot of dads do. They will, they will present themselves as a model, as a, as a model father and someone who's impeccable so that you you see the bar and you want to exceed the bar and you're motivated to do that instead of showing 
your imperfections and your blemishes so that we know that real heroes suffer from real life ailments and difficulties in their life that you have to overcome. And I think with, and I, and to me, it almost feels like this was the writers giving us the synopsis for who ghost was throughout the entire series and why possibly why this series is called ghost and why Tariq is the person to take the torch from him and go on to the next level. Cause this was, this was like a symbolic passing of the torch of the leads from Ghost to Tariq. Now that James is buried, his effect of who he is is going to reverberate throughout all the series. But yeah. officially now, this is Tariq's world. This is Tariq's show and how he operates and moves in it. From this point forward, it ain't about the sins of the father. It's about the actions of the son. Ooh, come on. Boy, you gonna pass the collection plate? Because that was just, I don't have nothing to say. And I mean, look, that the church has bills and I am the church. So if you want to pass the plate, go right around. Hey, at least I tell y'all where the money's going. Y'all see my side eye through this. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. You can see where the money's going. I was hoping you was going to give out your cash app. That would have been real. Lit, you know what I mean? Like, you Amen. Might have got a couple coins. Listen, uh, cash app is the same as the at. My, my, everywhere. You want to send me money, you want to send me tweets. You could do both at the same time. <laughs> I said it, but I didn't really mean for him to say it. Like it was just kind of uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> hey, you get you get the manager twenty percent of every one dollar I get. <laughs> okay, then I'm in. Y'all go now. Ahead, you win. Look at her. Okay. Now she's in. <laughs> uh, no, I love the, I love everything you said. You know what I mean? I think that what we like you said, what we are seeing is the past of the torch. And Tariq, in my eyes, is ready for that. You know, through his many many fuckups that he had through <laughs> power book one we're now seeing where of course now he is going to make some mistakes but he's smarter having now can he can appreciate the things that ghost was trying to do for him and not only that through the mistakes that ghost made he can improve you know what i mean i think that Tariq is extremely smart and not just book smart he's street smart he's every kind of smart you can think about and I think that his teachers see that. And I know you brought up the fact that he was taking that class. He's definitely taking that class because you get out a year faster. <laughs> That's why you can graduate in three years instead of four. So he knows he needs to take that class so he can get the money sooner. Um, but I love the fact that he was able to speak about his father in a way that can carry on. You know what I mean? Despite the fact that we know who Ghost was, Tariq also knows who Ghost was, mm -hmm. but he's leaving that legacy for Yaz, you know, he's, you still got Yaz to think about, despite the fact that we don't really see her that much. But she her knows she did. Yeah, her story matters too, and you have to think about that. Um, and but Grandma. I, I, was, I was impacted by that. I was actually more impacted by the Carrie, and I think it was Justin, his name is Justin, Jabari. Right? Yeah, is it Jabari? Yeah. Oh, I was more impacted by their conversation. Their conversation to me was like, damn, like they were hitting some extreme notes before they had some. They hit know, some extreme things. notes, word. <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminded me of the scenes from Ghost and Angie. I was like, okay, so now we're doing this. Okay, I see how y'all doing it. Yeah. Um, but Carrie made it a point to say that the pressure that society puts on young men, specifically young black men, to suppress their feelings is incredibly toxic and dangerous. And, you know, with everything that we have going on in the world right now, I thought that that, that sentence was very poignant. Like, it's very accurate. And as you, I also came from a Haitian household. We're not taught to talk about our feelings. We're really taught to suppress them, sweep everything under the rug to the point where you do need therapy by the time you hit 30, just warning all of you. Um, but yeah, you gotta have, you gotta be able to talk about your feelings. And, you know, Carrie tries to provide that outlet for Tariq, but Tariq really, I don't think is ready for that platform. What she wants him to be is not who Tariq feels he is or needs to be. He don't need to give a speech about his father in front of his classmates. Like that's, right. that's not what we're here for. Right. So, you know, I think that, and that's when I realized, okay, I think Tariq is going to do the right thing by his father when speaking at the eulogy because it just wasn't the right spot for him. I think she doesn't know the real Tariq yet. And so the pedestal she's trying to put him on, he's not trying to live up to that right now. Like you got to give him his space. And so she's, that's something that she's going to have to learn but then in the same breath, we also learn a lot about Carrie in this episode. You know, she's got an addiction of some kind. When you have a it's, sponsor. It sounds like it's a sex addict. Yeah. 
Oh, is that what it was? I, that's what I got. I was like, yo, she said it's sponsored, but I'm like, okay, you talking about you, you uh, addiction and, and I don't see nothing. I didn't hear nothing about alcohol. I didn't hear nothing about drugs. I was like, is she a sex addicted? But maybe it's not. I'm, 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 I'm going out of left field, but it could be, could be. It may be because I don't know what it is, but some of the conversations that she even has with Tariq, I feel like she's. I don't know. It Rehabbing. just feels like more than a teacher. It, you know what right. I mean? Like, I feel like she's trying to get on that very personal and deep level. Cautionary and tale I, type shit. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell if it's like for school or personal. Like, what are we doing? So that could be it. I couldn't make out what the addiction was. But I know when you have a sponsor, that's definitely what the situation is. 100%. So, I, you know, I'm interested in learning more about her character, why she and Jabari didn't work out. Because obviously there's something there. Well, they said it. They alluded to it that he, he you see on the wall, he has... Uh, um, posters for a, a novel raw something that he put out she i think she was the character it. in it and she put out he, he put out her business without her consent in the novel that blew up that's what i got from it um if y'all if y'all think oh. let me know if y'all think i got it twisted but that's what i got from it well, so that's what they killed somebody for what did she she used the line that he killed somebody and i, I knew it wasn't in the literal sense yeah that it i think it was their relationship it. because she he yeah. used their relationship or something about her in her in his book and that's why oh. it's like you know subconsciously she still wants to be with him but they she needs for her greater good she needs to step away so that's yeah, gonna be so that's gonna be thing. right yeah, right like, right oh, right <laughs> so that's something that we're gonna have to watch another thing we're gonna have to watch is um brayden using his white privilege for good and his and his name for good like yo right. it, that whole thing with the frat house and his older brother snuffing a cop and then getting out Yo, if that ain't the story about college white kids who who are endowed to the university and and have and do shit like that, like I, bruh, like that's just that is one hundred and one. That is going to be something to watch to see how he can. He may be the key to to retaking the, his organization to like the whole next level because he could take all the heat because they're not going to kick him out of that school. You don't kick the benefit first. We could make it. We could make it. Right, right. And, that, and that's what it is. And and if, yeah. if Tariq does that, then his joint is going to skyrocket. Uh, we got. I think he will though. Right. Thank you. We got one. We got one email today from Jermaine Brown. Jermaine, what's going on? Great to see you guys back. Quick question: Will there be more seasons to book two ghosts, or will the next season go into the prequel with Kanan? Um, I don't. I my understanding is that this is going to be a series just like all the other ones like all of the spinoffs are going to be series think about all of the law and orders all the ncis's it's going to be in that vein right i don't think i they we may be in a point where they run concurrently where there's a a book two ghost and then there's a prequel for for uh tate the tate one and then the tommy one right i think that's how it's gonna go but you know thank you for shouting us out stay tuned for more uh, I think that's it from us, ma'am. Yeah. You got anything else? No, that's it. Good episode, though. I'm excited. I actually really like this show, and I think that a lot of the fans do too. It's just taking them some time, but yeah, I like it. I mean, yeah, the writing is tight. They, there's, yeah. there's not like they, they're getting to it. They're answering things, and I hope they just keep it going. Thank y'all once again for listening, for watching us. You can subscribe to Power After Hours wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. We're everywhere for you to listen to and to watch. Follow us on Twitter at Power After Hours. And you can follow me and Chrissy on social. I'm at Jeff J says on all social. Chrissy, where can they find you? I am at Chrissy Bree everywhere you can think about it. Every single place. Appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Keep watching. Keep loving power. Use the hashtag Power After Hours on any commentary that you have. And we'll check it. We'll listen. And we'll interact with you. And until yeah. next time, we'll catch you later. Peace. Right, like city life. This is where it goes down. Yeah.